Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Tarwin here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 1, Part 4 of What If Deku Was an Osmosian. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. Class 1A arrived early for their second day at UA. The group spent the morning engaged in academics. The classes were much harder than they were expecting. Finally, the last period of the day came. It was time for their hero training the reason they had all entered UA. This energized their minds as they focused on the training ahead. The kids sat on the edge of their seats, wondering what they would be doing. Then, the classroom door opened and All Might entered the room in a dramatic pose. I am here, coming into the room like a hero. All the students were overjoyed. They had all heard that the number one hero would be teaching at UA this year, but none of them had expected he would be teaching their class. There were no words to express their adulation. None of the teens were as excited as Izuku. His smile was so big that he nearly ripped his facial muscles apart. All Might moved behind the lectern as the class oohed and aahed. Good afternoon, class. It is a pleasure to meet all of you. Today, your hero training begins in earnest. I hope you are excited. The class responded with a round of cheers. Today, I will be throwing you all into the deep end. One of the basics for any hero is to learn how to deal with villains. All Might held up a card that had battle written in bold red letters. So today, you will be in battle training. Bakugo saw this and was pumped. Combat training! Let's do this! I will show you all that I am the best! Now, now, students. I know you are excited. But remember, it is important for a hero to look the part. All Might pressed a button on the lectern and several shelves emerged from the wall. Each of the shelves held metal briefcases with large numbers printed on them. These are your hero costumes. They were created from the design you submitted with your registration paperwork. Now get changed and meet me on Ground Beta. After changing, the group emerged onto the cityscape of Ground Beta. Each of them looked epic in their new costumes. Ochako Uraraka walked over to Midoriya and Melissa. The green teen's costume consisted of a short-sleeve green shirt and green shorts. He wore his red combat sneakers and a pair of red fingerless gloves. His support bracelet that Melissa gave him was on display above his right hand. Melissa wore a pink and white jumpsuit. Black gauntlets covered her hands and lower arms. A special pair of reinforced black boots protected her feet and legs. These items were custom-made to allow her to use her power at a higher percentage than normal. Finishing off the costume was a pair of clear red glasses. Hey, Midoriya, Melissa, I like your costumes. I wish I had been more precise about mine. This tight fit is not really my thing. Izuku saw what the pink-cheeked girl meant. The outfit was very form-fitting. It left little to the imagination. His face now red-hot with embarrassment. He tried hard to think of what to say. I, I like the design. The space theme matches your quirk really well. Not to mention that it looks really cute on you. Thank you, Deku. That was really nice. At the mention of the name Deku, the flustered teen's face took on an adverse expression. Ochako saw this and wondered what was wrong. Did I say something wrong? You see, Uraraka, Deku is a name that Bakugo would call him to make fun of him. Ida overheard this conversation and responded in a robotic tone. Bakugo would make fun of his classmate? Unforgivable. Really, I am so sorry, Midoriya. I didn't know. I just thought it was your hero name. This comment raised the confused teen's interest. How is that? I thought Deku was short for Dekiru. You know, the word for I can do it. Really? Yeah, in fact, I think Deku would be a really cool hero name. It does have a nice ring to it. Izuku was overcome with joy. He did not know how to take so much praise. Deku it is, then. Really? Is that all it takes? I thought you said it was an insult. All Might called for the class's attention. The tall man held a container in his hands. He had a white face to his left and a black one to his right. He explained that they would be divided up into teams of two. One team would play the hero and the other the villain. The villains would guard a fake bomb. It was the hero team's job to capture the bomb and the villains. That was the only way they could win. The villains won if they captured the heroes or if time ran out. 
Mina Ashida raised her hand. Sir, isn't this a little advanced for us? We just started yesterday. This is UA, after all. You will face harder challenges than this during your training. Approach each challenge with grit and determination, and you will succeed. This statement moved all of the students. Each one now wanted to show the number one hero what they could do. Okay, it is time to pick the teams for the exercise. Everyone takes a slip from this container. The kids did as instructed. They all reached into the box and pulled out a slip of paper. The papers had matching numbers on them. Students with the same number would be paired up. It turned out that Izuku was paired with Momo Yaurozu. He knew the girl had gotten in on recommendations. He figured that meant she had a powerful quirk. But looking at her, the green teen did not know what to make of her. Additionally, her costume was even more revealing than Uraraka's outfit had been. At least the pink-cheeked girls had covered her body. Yayurozu's attire had so much exposed skin. The teen boy wondered why it was designed like that. Izuku shook his head and refocused himself. He had no time for such thoughts. He had to focus on his goal. This was just another hurdle he had to overcome. Melissa was paired with Uraraka. The two girls seemed really excited to work together. Okay, now that is done. It is time to see who is facing who. All Might placed his massive hands into the two boxes and pulled out two balls. Looks like our first match will be Izuku Midoriya and Momo Yayorozu versus Katsuki Bakugo and Tanya Ida. All Might then told the two groups the location of the exercise. He then took the rest of the class to a control room, where they could monitor the match safely. Izuku was standing outside the location, a multi-storied building, his body shivering with nervous energy. Midoriya, are you all right? Yes, I am fine. That is a lie. You are sweating through your costume. What is the matter? Midoriya was a little taken aback by how forward his teammate was. It's just, we're facing Bakugo. He is so strong. Then there is Ida. The two of them together might be too much for us. Expect defeat and that is what you will receive. We need to make a plan to counter our opponents. At first, Izuku thought the girl was cold. But now, he could see she was just focused at the task at hand. That made her seem a little less scary. True. What do you suggest? You seem to know Bakugo very well. What do you think he would do in a situation like this? Izuku was impressed by Yayurozu's insight. There was obviously a big brain behind that cute face. If I know Bakugo, he will not wait for us to find the bomb. As soon as the exercise starts, he will hunt us down and confront us directly. Momo got a pensive look on her face. The green teen could tell she was thinking really hard. That is not the most sound strategy. A better option would be for the two of them to remain together and defend the weapon until time runs out. Are you sure about this, Midoriya? Izuku nodded. Yes, Bakugo has had it out for me since we were little. He will come after me to prove himself. A very childish reason, but we can use it to our advantage. Momo looked at Izuku, and then her eyes met his wrist. You can transform your body into substances you touch? That is your power, right? It is. However, I need a lot of the material to transform my whole body. Really? But I saw you transform into the materials on that bracelet. There is no way that is enough material to coat your body. Yeah, about that. My body can memorize substances. Once it has, I can transform with only a small amount of the material. The communicative boy held up his wrist. I have memorized most of the materials on this support item. I see. That was a clever idea. Izuku gave the girl with the ponytail a grateful nod. What about you? I saw that your quirk lets you make things. True. My power lets me use my body lipids to form new materials. However, I need to understand the structure of the item I am making. Plus, the amount I can make is limited to the amount of lipids I have. The odd boy's eyes got large. Is your costume the way it is because of your quirk? Yes, you are very perceptive. My skin needs to be exposed for my quirk to work. If my costume covered my whole body, my quirk would rip it to pieces every time I created something. Izuku's face got mildly red as he pictured that idea. That makes sense. Still, 
You could do so much with your quirk. Thank you for that. Let's focus on the exercise. The best plan I can come up with is to split up. You take care of Bakugo. I will find Ida and the weapon. Join me when you can. Sounds good. I normally wouldn't do this, but it is the best plan I can come up with. I am depending on you, Midoriya. You can count on me. All Might called for the exercise to begin. The green teen went in through the front door. Momo went around the back to find a different way in. The messy-haired youth made his way carefully through the building. After going up several floors, he found his explosive opponent. Just as Izuku figured, Bakugo was waiting in the middle of the hall. Took you long enough, Deku. I've been waiting for you. Let's settle this right now. Okay, but I am not going to be holding back. Neither will I. I will be the number one hero. Izuku shifted his body into steel and ran at Bakugo. The spiky blonde attacked the rushing teen with a powerful explosion from his right hand. This would have sent most opponents flying, but Izuku was prepared. His steel body resisted most of the damage. Barely a scratch was left. The greenette stood with his opponent's arm in a lock. Take this, Bakugo! The steel lad's grip on his surprised opponent grew tighter. With a powerful throw, Izuku slammed Bakugo into the floor. A starburst of cracks radiated from the grenade boy's body. Most people would have passed out from such a blow. Bakugo did get the wind knocked out of him for a minute. However, that seemed to make him angrier. You always looked down on me, didn't you, Deku? Thinking your power was so much greater than mine. That is why I hate you! You are an idiot, Bakugo! I have never thought I was better than you! The reason I wanted to beat you is because you were amazing! And you can call me Deku all you want! From now on, Deku is the name of a hero! No more words passed between the two. The fight resumed. In the control room, All Might and the members of 1A all watched the conflict between the childhood friends with astonishment. Melissa was the first to speak. I figured this would happen. Yeah, Bakugo does not seem like the waiting kind. All Might interjected at this point. He is playing the part of a villain. But you are right, young Uraraka. It would have been better strategy for Bakugo to remain with his teammate to protect the bomb. But he is fighting well. On a different monitor, Momo had arrived at a doorway and was looking inside, careful not to be spotted. It looks like Yayurozu found Ida. I wondered where she was. Ida was standing in the corner, cackling like a villain. Momo quietly closed the door. She then used her quirk to create a device to secure the door. Asui saw this and turned her head to the side in confusion. What is she doing, Ribbit? She has secured the area, making sure that the villain cannot escape from the area. She is also waiting for her partner for backup. Also a wise move. She will need his combat power to deal with Ida's speed. Back on the field, Bakugo flew around the hallway like a deranged bat, using his explosions to maneuver in midair. He used this skill to dodge Izuku's punches and attacked him from behind with an explosion. The two exchanged several punches and explosions. Neither one was getting an upper hand. However, Bakugo was getting a little more beat up than Izuku. The metal youth thought to himself as he fought. If this keeps up, time will run out. I have to finish this. The problem is Bakugo is faster than I am. This steel body is tough, but not very quick. I will have to take a chance and use that. Izuku jumped back a few feet and activated his power. His skin changed substances with a wrap. It went from a light gray to a darker gray with brownish hues. Changing material, Deku. Your skin always wraps like that when you change. Bakugo looked at the support item on his opponent's wrist. I'm guessing it is on that bracelet that nerd girl gave you. True, but don't call her nerd girl. She has a name. The determined youth took a fighting pose. Well, it doesn't matter what you change into. I will rip it off of you piece by piece. Good luck with that. Izuku charged again. Bakugo went to dodge like he had been, but it didn't work this time. The metal teen caught his opponent by the leg. With all his might, Izuku slammed Bakugo into the floor. Again, the bombastic fighter lost his breath. But this time, Izuku did not give him a chance to recover. He unleashed a flurry of punches on his opponent. He screamed at the top of his lungs. Titanium barrage! On the last hit, Bakugo's body went limp. His eyes turned white and his head turned to the side. The metal teen stood for a moment, catching his breath. He placed his hand on Bakugo's chest. The metal that covered his body transferred to the unconscious boy and turned into a thick metal wire around his chest and upper arms, as well as his upper legs. 
The spiky green-haired boy then removed the capture tape that All Might gave him from his pocket. Izuku then made sure Bakugo's lower arms and legs were secured. It was probably unnecessary to do so, but the greenette did not want to take any chances. He knew that Bakugo would be pissed if he woke up, and he probably would not care that he was out of the match. As the teen worked, a voice came over his radio. Midoriya, have you taken care of Bakugo yet? Izuku finished wrapping Bakugo and sat him near the wall. I have, Yaurozu. It was not easy. Were you expecting it to be? Fair point. Where are you? I am on the fifth floor, near the middle of the building. Good. I have found Ida and the weapon. We are on the tenth floor near the back of the building. Get here quick. We will take care of Ida and secure the bomb. On my way. Midoriya took off running. He was impressed by his titanium shell. He got great strength but sacrificed none of his speed. In fact, he was probably a little faster. As he reached the desired floor, the thoughtful teen shifted back to his normal state. He did this to avoid being heard coming. His metal form tended to be very loud when he walked. Each of his steps boomed because of the weight. Not the best for stealth missions. Midoriya entered the floor and saw Yayurozu ducked in a corner. The tactical girl waved her teammate over after placing her index finger over her mouth, gesturing for silence. Izuku crept over to his teammate's location. It took you long enough, Midoriya. Are you ready? I am. Where is our opponent in the bomb? Momo pointed at the nearby door with a strange-looking lock on it. I placed that lock on the door so Ida could not move the weapon. I also secured the other exits. We need to take him out quickly to win. Okay. What's your plan? The girl created a metal cylinder, about the size of her hand. It had a pull ring on the top and a label that read, Fog Out, in bold yellow letters. Izuku was amazed by the action. He had to use all of his might to restrain the fanboy part of his brain. Is that a smoke bomb? Yes. I will throw this into the room to disorient Ida. Then you will rush in and disable him. Simple and to the point. You really are something, Yaurozu. The serious girl got a mild blush at this compliment. Thank you, Midoriya. Now, let's end this. We do not have much time left. Right! The two quietly approached the door. Momo undid the lock with extra care not to make a sound. She then slid the door open slightly. The two could hear Ida practicing his over-the-top villain act. Izuku had to restrain himself from laughing. After they established where Ida and the bomb were, Momo pulled the ring on the smoke bomb and tossed it into the room. Smoke bomb! With those words, the room filled with smoke, answering the silly villain's question. Izuku shifted into his titanium form and rushed into the room. He quickly found Ida and attacked him before he could react. The alloyed boy delivered a powerful blow to Ida's gut and shouted at the top of his lungs. Metal force! Ida stumbled backward from the blow. Still maintaining his villain persona, the engine teen replied through labored breathing. Nice try, hero, but I am still conscious. You will not succeed. As he spoke, the smoke cleared, revealing Yayurozu standing by the bomb with her hand placed on it. The armor teen saw this and freaked out. No! Villainy! All Might declared that Izuku and Momo were the winners. He then called for the four students to come to the control room for evaluation. Who was the star of this round? All of the students remained quiet, looking at each other confused. Finally, Izuku stood up. All Might, sir? I think Yaurozu was the star of this round. Interesting. Why is that, young Midoriya? Well, from the get-go, she planned out how to approach the exercise, taking into account the various players. When she found the bomb, she secured the location and waited for backup. She then had a plan ready on how to capture the bomb. She was amazing. I couldn't agree more, young Midoriya. However, young Ida deserves a mention. You prepared your area to defend against your opponents as best you could. You also took the exercise very seriously, though your villain performance was a little over the top. Thank you, sir. Now for young Bakugo. Your decision to attack Midoriya cost you the match. If you had worked with your partner and taken the exercise seriously, things might have been different. On the upside, you did demonstrate an incredible combat ability out there. But keep in mind that there is more to being a hero than fighting. Bakugo stood there with his teeth gritted. He could say nothing to All Might's words. Even though they made him mad, he agreed with every word the smiling hero said. Let's get on with the exercises. And so the matches continued. 
Each pair did their best. The one match that caught everyone by surprise was Todoroki. The bicolored team finished his exercise in moments. Both Izuku and Bakugo were shocked by this event. They knew coming to UA meant they would be faced with some of the best students in Japan. But this guy was on another level. The determined youths knew that they would have to get stronger to face off with their ice-hot classmate. The last match pitted Melissa and Ochako against Kaminari and Jiro. Melissa and Ochako were the hero, and their opponents were the villains. The electric and sound users put up a decent fight, but they were no match for the raw power of the pink-clad girls. As the lesson drew to a close, All Might gathered the group by the front of the training field. Good job today, everyone. You all made it through the class without any serious injuries. You all have a bright future ahead of you. Keep up the good work. The praise from the number one hero made the class so happy. Ribbit, thank you, sir. It is so nice to hear such uplifting words from a teacher. Mr. Aizawa was kind of a buzzkill. The other students nodded in agreement. It is my pleasure to bring such overwhelming positivity to my alma mater. Now let me show you how a hero leaves, like he has somewhere to be. The hulking man ran off at top speed, leaving a trail of dust behind. Several students commented that they would never be able to run that fast. With that, the day came to a close. All of the students had gotten their first taste of what the UA Hero course was like. All of them knew that they would have to bring their A-game and go beyond, plus ultra. Little did 1A and the teachers know that an evil unlike anything society had ever faced before was hiding in the shadows readying itself to attack. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. If you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestial My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Now, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.